What's going on guys, Andrew Pilikaki here, back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the Toronto Maple Leafs, and I decided to put on my Leafs Stadium Series jersey, hopefully you guys got a good look at that, it's my Mitch Marner one that I got, I think a couple months ago in Pickering, um, so yeah, I thought I'd put on the jersey, and we're going to talk about if the Toronto Maple Leafs need a defenseman, and if they are going after a defenseman, because there have been some rumors out there recently talking about how the Leafs may be inquiring um, about a couple defensemen that could be available this off season. So we're gonna look into the options. We're gonna look into a couple different things when it comes to the Leafs defensive core now and what it could be. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this video. Leaf fans, or if you're not a Leaf fan, hopefully you'll enjoy the, the trade rumors because it could involve your team as well. So stick around, see if any of your favorite teams are going to be trading with the Toronto Maple Leafs or could be talking with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Again, these are all just rumors and just fun discussion stuff. But the first thing I wanted to, to mention was uh, an Instagram account that I like to follow. It's called Leafs Nation underscore news. Now, this is a Leafs based account. But again, if you're wondering uh, if your favorite team is going to be talking with the Toronto Maple Leafs about a trade or maybe a favorite player on your team is being signed by the Leafs or something like that, you should definitely check it out. But Leaf fans specifically, if you want to check out this account, you definitely should. I actually do follow the account. They post updates about the Toronto Maple Leafs newest news, signings, trades, and whatnot. And it's it's really good if you're like not wanting to read an entire article and you just want to quickly check on your Instagram and see if the Leafs are doing anything. So hopefully you guys will like that account because I definitely do. So they posted something that I was very interested about and I think you might have seen a quick picture of it a little bit earlier. but. Um, it was says, according to Bob McKenzie, the Leafs have been linked to Oliver Ekman Larson from Arizona, Justin Falk from Carolina, uh, Chris Tanev from Vancouver, and Alec Martinez from LA, also uh, David Savard from the Columbus Blue Jackets. So those are a lot of names that uh, the Leafs have been talking uh, talking about internally, or maybe um, some rumors have been going around about them maybe trying to acquire one of those defensemen. So I figured, let's go through every single one of those guys uh, briefly, and let's just see if maybe the Toronto Maple Leafs will have any interest in them uh, or if it's even a smart move to go after any of these guys so uh, yeah let's let's just quickly do a uh, quick discussion about the Leafs defense uh, core right now of course Morgan Riley and Jake Garner both had over 50 points very productive seasons uh, they're both great uh, offensive defensemen we all know that and the thing is, is they're not as great defensively. Morgan Riley might be a little bit better, but I also made an argument to why Jake Gardner's an underrated, um, not a defensive defenseman, but he's better defensively than a lot of people think. And then, you know, you have guys like Polak, Hainsey, Zaitsev, and, you know, the list goes on and on. Uh, Carrick. Yeah, there, there's a bunch of defensemen on this Leafs core that do have a shot at making this team next year, of course. There's a lot of guys that are already locked up, and we already mentioned most of those names besides Polak, uh, Polak and uh, Carrick. Uh, you know, Borgman's in the system, Rosen's in the system, Timothy Liljegren's in the system, of course, Travis Dermott, Justin Hall. There's a lot of names there. So the Leafs could be interested in trying to get a uh, bigger name guy, maybe a guy who's better defensively, uh, maybe a guy who can put up some more points as well, but we're gonna have to see what they wanna do this off season. So let's start off with Alec Martinez, and it could be Alex, but I'm pretty sure it's Alec Martinez. So he definitely has some experience, as you can see the photo that I got, he's a, he's won a Stanley Cup, He's he has playoff experience for sure, but he's 30 years old, he's a left-handed shot, and again, that could be something that the Leafs might not be interested in. Um, obviously him being a left or right-handed shot isn't going to dominate whether or not they want him or not but I know the Leafs have been looking at a right-handed defenseman for quite some time now so that could uh, factor into whether or not they would go after a guy like Alec Martinez uh, he's 6'1 and 208 pounds and of course you can see his points right here his career high in points as far as I can see is 39 points it may be, uh, it's not showing his career stats uh, like before 2009, 2010, I'm not sure if he came into the league before that. I, I don't know literally every single player in the league when they entered the league, but he definitely has had some good years. Uh, Alec Martinez isn't a defensive defenseman, uh, quite frankly, not that's not his title, 
but he's definitely a lot better than a lot of defensemen and I think he would he would probably fit into the Leafs system pretty decently but I don't think it would be worth it for the Leafs to go after him and that's definitely not a diss against him it's just I don't know if he would be um, you know worth giving up assets for I don't know if the Leafs would really uh, get full value back for what they would be giving up because I think that they would they might overpay for a guy like Alec Martinez because I feel like the Kings do not want to give him up he's got a couple or three years left I believe including next season at four million so that's a pretty good contract but again a really good contract like that means you're probably going to pay a little bit more than you want to and I'm not sure if the Leafs would be interested in paying that price and that's no knock against him it's just he might not be the guy that the Leafs are interested in going after so the next guy that I wanted to mention was David Savard from the Columbus Blue Jackets so as you can see he is 27 years old he's a right-handed shot like I mentioned um, the Leafs could be going after more right-handed uh, defensemen. He's 6'2", 227, so he's he's a big guy. You know, he's got some weight to him, and those are his career stats. Now he did have a 36 point a year. Uh, none of these numbers are just out of this world crazy, except for his plus minus in the 2016-2017 season where he was a plus 33, which is obviously very good. I would say that he is more of the defensive type. Uh, the, again, not a defensive defenseman. You wouldn't just categorize him as that in my opinion. Now, a lot of people might not be familiar with David Savard. He's a guy that I had to do a little bit of homework on because he is, from what I've read and from what I've seen, I mean, I, it's not like I haven't heard of him at all. It's just I haven't done enough homework on him to really know truly what type of player he is over his career. But from the research I did do, they say that he's good at moving the puck, which I could agree with from what I've seen. And he, he would be probably a decent fit with the Leafs. Now again, we're not sure how much it would take to get a guy like David Savard, but he also is on a pretty decent contract. He's at 4.2 uh, for the next three seasons, including next. So it definitely would be, you know, a little bit of a, a price to pay uh, depending on what the Columbus Blue Jackets are looking for uh, in return because, again, they might not want to give him up. Columbus is still competing. If they do want to get some scoring, maybe the Leafs can provide them some players. But again, you're not going to want to be giving up guys, depth guys in your system uh, like the Leafs have because I feel like they do have a lot of really good depth when it comes to forwards. I'm not sure if they really want to be giving uh, guys like that up because of the fact that they want to be able to keep a lot of their players, their core together and have them grow together. So the next player I want to talk about is Justin Falk from the Carolina Hurricanes. Now this is a guy that's been talked about with the Leafs for a couple of years now. Whether or not those rumors have been true, uh, we'll have to see because the Leafs might talk with Carolina again this summer. It's been talked about Carolina and the Leafs should be talking because Carolina wants forwards, they're rebuilding a little bit and the Leafs need defensemen. Now, here's my point here. I made a tweet about Justin Falk uh, a while ago saying that Jake Gardner, in my opinion, is a much better option than Justin Falk, and he definitely is. A lot of people are mad at Jake Gardner for being not that great defensively. Well, no offense to Justin Falk, but take a look at his plus minus. He's a career minus 109. This past season, he was a minus 26, while Jake Gardner was a plus 9. So keep that in mind. Gardner is much better when it comes to point production as well. So I'm not trying to say Falk is bad, but Jake Gardner is much better. But let's get into it. Age 26, he shoots right. Again, it's, you're going to pay a little bit more for a guy like that. He's six feet tall and he's 215. So again, um, sorry, his weighs 215. But Justin Falk is on almost a $5 million contract for this coming season and next. Depending on what Carolina wants, which probably is going to be quite a bit from what everybody has been saying, especially um, guys like Bob McKenzie and Elliot Freeman, if anybody is linked to Carolina, Carolina wants to you know, get some big pieces back. So uh, Justin Falk may not be the best option. In my opinion, at first I was like, okay, maybe he puts up points, but looking at that plus minus, he definitely uh, is not impressing me that much. Shout out to Shania Twain. But uh, Canadians will probably get that reference. I just don't think that Justin Falk is probably the best option for this team. And again, that's not a diss to him. I just don't think that it's worth it for the Leafs to go after him. So the next guy that I want to mention here is Chris Tanev from the Vancouver Canucks. So looking at Chris Tanev's stats here, um, well, his, his numbers too, uh, he's... Age, he's obviously 28 years old, as you can see there. Again, shoots right, so you're going to pay a bit of a premium. Uh, he's 6'2", and he's 195. Pretty good-sized defenseman. 
Now, here's where you guys are probably going to look at these numbers and go, damn, where's all of his points? Well, Chris Tanev is a defensive defenseman. This is the type of player that I wish the Leafs would go after. But my only problem with Chris Tanev is the fact that he is very injury prone. He gets injured quite a bit. And that probably comes with the fact that he is, you know, a little more physical, blocks more shots. And he tries to be, you know, the defensive defenseman style, which he really is. And he does a really good job at it. Now, as you can see with his plus minus, he, yeah, he didn't play in all 82 games the last, you know, ever. I don't think he's ever played 82 games if you look at his numbers. But, you know, playing playing only 42 and 53 games in his past couple seasons is not very good. But as you can see, the point I was getting to is he was a plus 3 in the 2016-2017 season and he was a plus 7 in the 2017-2018 season. And those uh, Vancouver teams were not very good. So him being a plus is very good, but at the same time, the points aren't really there. And I'm not looking for him to put up, you know, 50 points, but... Having a guy who is a, a pretty good defensive defenseman and putting up 25 to 30 points would be ideal. If Tanev wasn't so injury prone, I would be telling the Leafs, you need to make a move at this point. A defensive defenseman that uh, shoots right and probably could put up 25 to 30 points is like a gold mine. And I don't think the Vancouver Canucks are really ready to just give up on Chris Tanev because uh, of his injury issues. They they probably value him as a good piece for this team. Now, uh, he has a modified no-trade clause, and he's at $4.4 million for this season and next season. Uh, well, the season after that. Uh, the numbers for Cap Friendly right now are the season that's coming up, of course, because the Stanley Cup playoffs are nearly over, which is pretty sad. But uh, Tanev has a decent contract, a couple years left on that deal, and he would probably take a lot to pry away from the Vancouver Canucks. So that might not be the best option, but again, these are just guys that the Leafs have been linked to. And out of all of these guys, I think he would be my favorite guy to target if you didn't give up too much because of the fact that he is so injury prone. Now, obviously, we've said this name before. We're going to mention it now. Oliver Ekman Larson. So, clearly, he's probably the best name out of all of them in this video. And he's not really been linked to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Of course, it's been suggested. But this is a guy that you would have to pay so much for. He's been rumored to be getting a contract extension with the Arizona Coyotes. Hell, at the end of this video, maybe they're already discussing and finalizing the details. But... Uh, again, just to just for the sake of mentioning his name and for the fact that he has technically been talked about in um, you know Leafs rumors before, we might as well just mention him. So obviously Oliver Ekman Larson, he's 26 years old, shoots left, 6'2", and he is 200 pounds, so another big defenseman with a bit of weight on him as well. And the left-handed shot doesn't uh, probably matter that much when he's a guy that can put up 50 points for you. The minus numbers there don't really... Um, affect his game too too much because of the fact that again he's not labeled as a defensive defenseman he is an offensive guy and those Arizona teams have not been very good he's been basically one of the only bright spots on that team of course now they have a lot more to to look forward to because they've got a bright future in my eyes and I think that they're going to be pretty good uh, within the next three years and I think that Vancouver, or Vancouver, Arizona probably wants to keep him there because he is a good defenseman when it comes to offense. So getting rid of, uh, getting rid of a guy like him could be detrimental to this Arizona team. And if he does sign, then that's fantastic uh, with Arizona. I'm not going to be mad as a Leaf fan because I think that he's a good fit there. Of course, I'd love to see him in Toronto, but to pry him away from Arizona, you're going to be paying a king's ransom. Now, of course, like I mentioned, he only has one year left on his deal for this coming season at 5.5, a very team-friendly contract for a guy that puts up that many points. So prying him away, like I said, will be very difficult. So let me know what you guys think, Leaf fans and not Leaf fans if you just want to talk about this which defenseman might be the best for the Leafs uh, if I'm going to be quite frank with you I don't want any of them and I'm, I'm and that goes for Oliver Ekman Larson as well you're going to give up way too much and that's not a diss to any of those guys out of all of them I would like Tanev the most because I want a defensive defenseman on this team I think the Leafs are going to stick to their internal plan and maybe look at free agency once all the defensemen are available hopefully after not this season but next summer so let me know what you guys think if you're new make sure you subscribe love to have more hockey conversations with you i'll see you guys in the next video stream peace